most geologists would refer to the High Plains Aquifer, of which the Ogallala Aquifer would be a significant part, indeed the major part of it. The High Plains Aquifer, as the U.S. Geological Survey would describe it, would include other geologic strata that are saturated with water. The Ogallala Aquifer is nothing more than a pile of sediments and sedimentary rocks that are porous enough to hold water. Um, that, that is an understatement, however, in many ways, because in Nebraska, the saturated thickness of the Ogallala reaches its maximum. Saturated thickness is the total thickness of sedimentary rocks and sediments in which the pores are saturated with water. And that total saturated thickness in Nebraska reaches 1,500 feet, which is a pretty astounding number. Uh, people need to understand one salient point about aquifers in general, and that is that they aren't underground lakes. They are indeed water stored in small pores in porous media, for example, thick layers of sand. People are, I think, frequently under the misconception that the High Plains Aquifer underlies all of Nebraska. It doesn't. It does not underlie the southeastern corner of the state, which just happens to be where most of the population is. Even, even if we weren't pumping water out of the High Plains Aquifer, it would still be vastly important because uh, it has a direct relationship with surface water in Nebraska. That's one thing that uh, many people seem to misunderstand or be utterly unaware of, is that surface water and groundwater are intimately linked. And there are certainly large stretches of major rivers in Nebraska uh, that are gaining flow from groundwater. That is, groundwater is seeping in to those streams. And so flow in many of Nebraska's streams is related directly to the High Plains Aquifer, whether water is going into the aquifer or coming out of it. We'll be pumping water out of it for a long, long time, I think yet, for, for decades if not maybe centuries. Uh, it depends on so many other variables. Uh, it depends on the intensity of use. It depends on land use techniques, whether we are employing or will be employing water conservation techniques. Uh, those have been applied fairly rigorously in parts of Texas, laser land leveling, trying to level uh, farm fields so that they're almost completely flat, so the water doesn't run off, it only percolates. Drip irrigation systems and a number of other strategies for getting the most out of every drop of water, those are big variables in all of this. I do think in the end um, we have not been very good to our aquifers on a national basis and really for the most part on a global basis. So we can learn a lot about how to use them better and make them last.